Hello and welcome to the installation video of ArchBang Linux Beta version 2020 April 11th So the first thing you have to do uh, you go under distrowatch.com and here you will put ArchBang and then where it says home page click on the first one not the second one the first one the source forge then the files tab the ArchBang folder and the ISO is right there. Now, I already downloaded it, so we'll not do it again. So let me just minimize this. And then, may I use VMware Workstation? Anything else can work, not a problem. You know, VirtualBox, Hyper-V, if you're on a Mac, VMware Fusion, and so on. Two virtual CPUs, four gig of RAM and 20 gig hard drive. It's more than enough for this demonstration. So let me just power this up. And then from here, just press enter. Okay, so now it loaded up the live version of the ISO. Now, from there, I would like to show you a bigger screen. This is like 800 by 600. But if I go under applications, unfortunately, there's nothing here that allows me to put a bigger screen. So I have to install my tool manually. sudo pacman minus capital SY. And the one that I like to use is ARANDR. That's my favorite one for OpenBox. But unfortunately, there's no repo configured. So first thing first, let's put a repo. So sudo leafpad with the number three etc pacman.d mirror list. Then you choose the closest one. In my case, it will be Waterloo. And it's working. Perfect. Now, if I go back to my applications, preferences is right there. And what I will do is I will just set the resolution to this one here and apply. Now, I'm a bit of a perfectionist, so I really don't like the fact that it's all tiled like this, <laughs> to be quite honest with you. Uh, so how about we just fix that right now? If I go to the file manager, the backgrounds are there. If I just open it and then I go under background and I say scaled, it's going to look just awesome. Here we go. Now, it's not supposed to be here. This is supposed to be more to the right. So if I go into terminal, I can do this command. By the way, I'm going to put all those commands under the description of the video. If it's you use, if you need it. So here we go. Perfect. That looks much, much, much better. So now if we start installation, choose installers, make sure you choose the first one, then the second one. Choose the first one here. It execute the script a b install let me resize that shift control and plus that's what i did in order to make this a little bit bigger press one partition scheme now if you do the keystrokes exactly as i'm giving you it's going to create no problem whatsoever but if you don't you might have some issues default three for f disk one for my 20 gig hard drive and and this is really important just press enter 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 plus 15 gig enter press n again enter 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 pay for print everything is exactly as it should my root partition which will include my boot partition is 15 gig and my swap 5 gig. 
Now, there's two things that needs to be done. Here, I need to tell it that it is a swap partition. If you press M and go up a little bit, you will have here change the partition type. It's T. And the partition is default. Enter. The hex code, well, I don't know them by heart. And if you press L, it's a bit sneaky. Because if you search there, it's actually not there. You have to scroll up a little bit. It's actually 82. That's the point. It's like this, but whoop, look at this, 82. <laughs> so press 82. Okay. And then if I print, it's all good, but I still need to set up my boot flag. So my boot flag, again, if you press M, and you go up a little bit, it's actually A. So you press A, then you press 1, and you print, and everything is exactly as it should. W to write, enter. And it's asking you, what's the root partition? I choose 1. You want to format yes. Now, on this file system, ext4, I've noticed when you, when you start compiling a lot of kernels, you kind of see that, is that extension 4 is the default. So I'll just choose this one to, to be safe. And then for the swap, I'll choose my partition, which is sda2. And you want to format it, yes. Enter. That was the most difficult part. This is pretty much what makes this beta version work or not. The rest is pretty simple. Number two, to install ArchBank. Okay, so what I will do from here is I will pause the video and when it will be close to 100%, I will unpause it. Okay, so now we're close to 100 and look at that. It's more than 100 now. <laughs> it actually will go to 178. I'm not sure if it's because of my virtualized environment, but here we go. So let's go to the host name, uh, Arch bang i just like to put that linux and then my time zone and the time zone for me uh, i will just choose america and then i will choose 125 for toronto and i say yes and the hardware clock yeah just like utc and local well a good old usa so 92 for that that's what i use And I was going to build the init RAMFS and init, you know, all that kind of stuff. For this purpose of the demonstration, the missing firmware is not a big deal. It will work, no problem. Okay. So if you choose 7, again, for the keyboard, I choose US, and I say yes. Now the bootloader, if you choose the first one, the second one, both will work. Um, I think that it's good to get used to grub2 because grub2 will allow you to boot EIFI partition. So let's choose this one and let's choose automatic. Works all good. Almost done. The root, what's going to be the password? Well, you know, choose something you got to remember. I think that's the toughest part. And then the user, Archbang user, doesn't have to be creative. There we go. Done? Yes. Just press enter. Okay. So this is really important not, and I say not, to log in with root. It has to be the ArchBank user. Okay. So normally at this point you would say, okay, you know, this install is successful and there's pretty much nothing else to do. But if you go back to the applications and you go under preferences, it still doesn't show you know, what we installed previously, so we still stuck 800 by 600. So let me sh let me install that again for you. So if you do sudo pacman and you go like this, like this, and you say yes. Oh, it gives me this error message. Okay, so what is it? 
all I have to do what it says here pacman init okay so I'm gonna do sudo pacman key init okay done so let me install it again yes oh now it's asking me to import some keys sure yes 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 and then it's telling me it's corrupted do you want to delete it or well uh default is yes well okay yes corrupted 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 and then there's nothing else I can do <laughs> okay so we're having a little bit of an issue here so to fix this those are all the commands and again I will put that into the description video so if you go like this all right and then you do this we did that before and but then you to ask to populate and then I'm going to refresh the keys and there's like 116 of them so what I will do is I will let this run a little bit pause the video and then when it's near to its completion I will actually run the video again okay it's all done so let me clear this and let's try to install again and while I'm at it bim. yes and it's all working great if I go there and it's right there okay so let's do this and apply if you log off and log in the screen will be back to 800 by 600 so this is a little bit out of scope but since I'm here why not save this put screen size enter okay I'm going to open two terminal on one because I need to code just another one for the reminder right here so if I do this there we go so what I will do is I will there's no need for sudo actually if I do config and I do open box and auto start if I modify that file first thing I will do is put a little bit of a comment and then set screen size which is located in my home screen layout screen size dot sh okay. if I just leave this like that what's going to happen is to launch the command but it won't have the time to resize it and then the wallpaper will still be scaled like you're seeing right now so it's a little bit too fast and we have to put a pause here here we go let's put a little bit of a pause here we go that's gonna work I'm gonna save this and exit so that way when I'm gonna log out and then I'm gonna log myself in again here we go everything looks great if I go and launch terminal I can launch like the browser I can launch like a file manager I can launch an editor and you know it looks all great and the browser just kicked in there we go makes this beautiful and then we can launch htop and we can make this bigger here we go here we go voila everything works great now you can actually use it as a functional 
OS and have some fun. Thank you very much for watching this installation video. I hope this was useful for you and save you a lot of time. Take care.